Being in it together has been a theme of the coalition government's approach to tax and spending. The disclosure earlier in its term that entertainers had used government-designed tax reliefs in order to minimise their personal liability stoked controversy. Remember the talk about the tax relief to encourage films to be made in Britain? Taxpayers who invested in those schemes and saved tax were using a government-designed relief, not abusing the tax system. But there's very little sympathy in the press for Lord Tomlin's 1936 ruling, which stated that every man is entitled, if he can, to order his affairs so as that the tax attaching under the appropriate acts is less than it otherwise would be. This tax year, the best paid 1% of workers, people earning more than £160,000 a year, paid 30%, nearly a third, of all income tax. Those really rich people making more than a million pounds a year by themselves paid nearly an eighth. The reality is that the share of total income tax paid by the, the very best paid has risen sharply over the past decade. Fifteen years ago, the top earning 1% paid 20% of total tax bills. Five years ago, the figure was just below 25%. There are plenty of anomalies around income tax rates and many of them do apply to higher rate taxpayers and there are nearly five million of them. Both the coalition and the previous Labour government raided the size of the basic tax rate band to finance the increase in the personal allowance. It now means that that rate is at least £6,000 a year less than it ought to be meaning more and more taxpayers are drawn into that band where they're paying 40%. The withdrawal with effect from this tax year of child benefit from middle class workers means that some parents are in effect allowed to keep only 27 pence in every pound they earn. Also at an income tax level of £100,000 a year, workers lose a pound in their personal allowance for every two pounds they earn until the allowance disappears completely at earnings of 120,000 pounds a year. That is a marginal tax rate of 62%. Governments draw an artificial distinction between income tax and national insurance, although they're both actually paid into the same tax pot. It allows ministers to claim that the top rate is 45% when it's really 47%. Other countries that have cut excessively high tax rates actually end up bringing more money in to government coffers. It's a lesson politicians should remember as they compete with each other to boast about which administration had the higher tax rates. 